The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Greg the Barbecue Broker DiGiorgio. Let's talk barbecue. Up there? What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Studio 21 Podcast in Salem, New Hampshire. It's the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast where we talk all things barbecue and any other topics you might want to talk about around the pit. Today, we're joined by guest co-host C-Mac from the Blackstone Boys. What's up, buddy? My dude, what's up? Ah, you know, good to be back. Good to be back. It's been a little while. Yeah. 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 Get to uh, yeah. get to sit in the, the, the throne, mm-hmm. usually sat in by our good friend Johnny Mags, mm-hmm. who is... He just had his uh, knee scoped today, yeah. and his word is, yep, he's doing just fine. Johnny, my dude. Oh, yep. oh, oh, in fact, he. Uh, I'm not even gonna read what uh, <laughs> what, said, what Mags just said. He said, so. "Don't beep it up." All right, glad everything went well, Mags. Uh, Absolutely, quick recovery, and uh, I, I'll try not to f it up. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> keep it smooth, bro. Don't worry, your uh, bald-headed compadres at the helm. That's right. This is actually this it's is probably like- the most hair that's been on this program, or actually on the <laughs> dais since uh, since Mike was here. Yeah, probably, right. That's amazing. Yeah, I was going to try to get a little skull cap to, but. <laughs> Didn't have the time. Well, it wouldn't be as tan as mine. Uh, been. Well, it's, right yeah, it's beautiful. You pull it off. I well. didn't shave today. It's a little stubbly, but it's not about bald. This show is not about baldness. <laughs> That's right. I could do a show on baldness, though. Yeah, we could do a lot wait, on wait, that. Wait till Max gets mm-hmm, back. Mm-hmm. So, um, what do you? What'd you cook this past weekend? <sighs> so, <laughs> well, you know how hot it's been around here. Oh, dude! Stifling hot, humidity. California kids still, you know, three years out in New England. I'm still trying to get used to it, but it's what we call a wicked scorcher. It is a wicked scorcher. It's a wicked scorcher. <laughs> so I went out on Friday and got a bunch of food because I really wanted to do a cook and didn't really kind of think about the weather. So I did get a cook in Saturday, which yep. was probably the best day out of the weekend mm-hmm, or out mm-hmm. of the extended weekend uh, on my new mistress, the the Art of Flame. Whoa! So how are you liking that? Because I'll tell you, you are. With the new mistress, a lot more than the. Uh, the OGs. Don't, 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 don't say it. Don't I'm say gonna, it. I'm not. I'm just uh, saying that. Don't, don't get me in trouble. I, you better be keeping the covers on those uh, no, blackstones because no, no. they're they're seeing you cooking on. They're getting jelly. Listen, you know how it is. You get something <laughs> new and you want to play with it. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I went back to my California roots and did uh, did a couple tri tips um, over the over the open fire pit on the art of flame did mm-hmm. a bunch of veggies did actually more veggies than i probably ever cooked before just to fill Dude, it up um the pic by the way you you are quite the photographer you take well, some you. really nice photos uh, you know it's uh i'm, I'm trying to it I'm, makes a difference you know you could I, have the best food and not showcase it and then no one knows the magic well i finally learned how to not get my big mitt you know over the over the lens so my fingers in every picture so yeah. I'm, I'm i'm heading in the right direction but uh but it came out well i yep. had plenty of tri-tip left over plenty of veggies and uh yeah that thing's been uh, been a lot of fun Mm-mm-mm. what's up daddy dutch matty osborne mike c ryan of course johnny and claudia What's up, Kevin Perot? Dog father in the New house. New England cigar militia. The dog pound in the house? Uncle Steve. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching. Charlie Baker. The dog pound. <laughs> I love it. You got his, he's, he, Alton's got his own sound effects. Oh, I like that. Yeah, he's got like his own that. clip. Oh, he should. He should. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, so, so. But I got to ask you, because you were cooking. I know you did some, I don't know, some naked cook or something over the weekend. I saw, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to look away. It was but. a shirtless edition of the Barbecue Broker live video. Gotcha. It was hot AF, yeah. and I'm telling you right now, man, I'm just going through shirts. It just looks worse if I'm wearing a oh, yeah. raggedy, sweaty shirt. So um, I had it, but it was my sweat rag, oh. so not to be gross. But uh, I still not, I was able to knock out some pork belly burn ends. Nice. And uh, those came out pretty awesome. But today. I saw that. Oh, man. That I cooked in my large size a big green egg, because uh-huh, uh-huh. I am also an egghead. Love right. my stick burner, but I'm an egghead too. I like I like <clears throat> where you're going with this transition. By the way, cook some 
Wagyu beef cheeks. Oh, come on now. Dude, and you saw the, the crust of the, the bark, just the, the yeah. close-up I got. Yeah. So those are resting right now in the... Uh, I'm a little pissed off, by the way, that why? you didn't bring at, just one of them down here to snack on <laughs> as, as your guests came in. You know what? Uh, you're, not very you're probably right. There was a small kind of raggedy-ass piece in there I probably could <laughs> I probably hey, could have. I would have. But, I would, I but you know, there's not ass. much. There's not much. I should have brought that piece for us. I just should have. But if you know what would happen, you don't understand. If I walk through those double doors downstairs, yeah, the wolves from the cigar shop, yeah, I would never make it upstairs. You can oh, yeah. smell it from miles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I hear you. Look, we got to yeah. get to business yes, here, and today yes. we have a great guest. Oh, oh an unbelievable. We are very. Lucky and fortunate yep. to have this man on today. Author of Mastering the Big Green Egg. Author of, and uh, known by the man, his name is Craig Tabor. Sometimes referred to by some as Big Green Craig. What's up, Craig? Two Craigs What's and a Greg. What's happening, guys? Yeah, Craig, Craig, <laughs> and Greg. This might get weird. It might get weird. I'm okay with that if it's you guys already, are. It's already weird. It's, <laughs> it's beautiful names, beautiful panel, all handsome devils. Oh, look at you. What's up? How's things, brother? Things are good. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm, I'm inside today trying to cool off from the Georgia heat where we're sweltering down here in the south. And, and uh, that's that's the best thing about eggs. You can leave them smoke outside and you can come inside and, uh, and enjoy the, the air conditioning. <laughs> yep, which is what I did today. It must be, and we're complaining about the heat, and he's in Georgia. I know, I, I know, right? We don't even know heat. No, no, <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's ninety-five here today. Yeah, that's a whole nother. And that's humid. a whole nother version of heat, man. Yeah, heat, humidity, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's awesome to have you, man. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for, for having me. I appreciate the, it. Taking the time to uh, hang out with us knuckleheads here. That's right. You know. Um, so tell us what. So so. How did you get into all this a barbecue cooking? Were you a cook before barbecue? Are you like a, were you classically trained chef and you got into barbecue or are you just a backyard self-taught maniac that just obsesses over barbecue kind of like we do um, and then just took it to that next level? Tell us, t- tell us kind of how it all, how it all began. How it all went down. Yeah, sure. And what so, legit? You know, I, and what led you to this? Right? I, I, you know, I was always, uh, uh, I've always cooked, I guess, mm-hmm. a, a little bit. I, I always had an offset stick burner, and and I had a gas grill at the time. And and with this is years ago, very, very, very limited capabilities. I knew that if I wanted barbecue for a game on Sunday, I was up all night long on Saturday throwing sticks, and that was fine. And, and it turned out some great, some great barbecue. But my friend. A friend of mine told me much how we all have gotten our big green eggs or how have we have all learned about them. Uh, he said, listen, man, you're working way too hard for barbecue. I said, well, tell me, please tell me more. And uh, uh, so, so he, he, he says, yeah, I, I, put my, uh, I, I put my barbecue in. Uh, it cooks all night long. I wake up and it's done. Barbecue is ready to go. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's, it, it sounds very simple and, and, and it really is. And I had to, I had to experience it myself. Went out, got a large, uh, extra large big green egg, and then it started turning into challenging myself. Okay, this this is called the ultimate cooking experience. I'm only cooking ribs and pork shoulder on there. What am I missing that that, that we can cook on this thing? And so uh, every cook became a challenge, and it, it wasn't. Um, I, I don't do a whole lot of of repeat recipes. I I just do a lot what I call cooking, and it's. I take this flavor. I like that. I like this. Let's put them together. Let's see how it turns out next time. Hey, let's do it a little bit different. Let's, let's, let's play with these flavors. But you know, you know, you, you do all your barbecue stuff and then you're like, well, let's now, what can we do? Let's get into baking. Let's do pizzas. Let's do desserts. Let's do cakes and pies. And, you know, let's get into some, some, you know, j- j- just craziness like that. And, and it, it, it eventually it just sort of snowballed into, you remember years ago when, when people were, um, when Facebook really started taking traction and and everybody was you know was was posting what they're eating for dinner and it really wasn't popular at the time. I was that guy. I was one of those guys. And my my wife just said, "Why don't you, why don't you take that somewhere else or or you know, you know move somewhere else with that?" So I started some some social media under certain monikers and and uh, things started really growing and and, and accelerating. 
uh, you know, I started, I started working with companies, started uh, developing recipes, writing recipes for some of them. I started competing, winning com- uh, competitions. And then ultimately what you've got in front of you is, uh, is, is all of my years of knowledge and experience. It may not be the only way. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I do say that in the book, but I've got some pretty good experience and some pretty good uh, results with 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 how I've uh, come come to a you know to lighten fires to fire management to setups to recipes and uh, so that's that's it right there years and years and years cultivated into <coughs> in, in, into one manual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so I know and and you got some great recipes in here oh, and you kind of touched on it for a second. Is I know one of your slogans right is there isn't anything I won't grill. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that probably says it all. Um, well, the, what is it? Is there's nothing he hasn't, or well, nothing he won't grill, right? Nothing you won't. Nothing right? you won't grill. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I kind of found out about you. Uh, besides you having a great first name, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> back about five years ago, when I got my first big green egg, when I was living back in California, and I said, "Hey, this guy cooks on big green eggs. His name's Craig. I got to kind of figure out what he's all about." And so, been kind of following you and your your path for a while. But as we kind of talked about a little bit, is that you have moved from you know the the big green Craig to just Craig Tabor, right? And you've got a new logo and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so so talk a little bit about that um, that transition, and also like all of us, um, big green egg is not the only thing that you cook on. And I and I know again, I follow you. I know in the Thunderdome you got a lot of stuff. Wait, what's wait, 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 hold on a second. Now. Thunderdome. Hold on a second. What is this Thunderdome that you speak of, C Mac? That's uh, that's for Craig to, to explain, I think. What is the Thunderdome? Are there roller skates so, involved? What do we got? Yeah, right? The, 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 thunder, the Thunderdome is where two men enter. <laughs> with their barbecue oh, device. The, the one with the best barbecue leaves. <laughs> we, uh, we moved into our current house about five years ago, and the immediate, the, the, literally, we, as soon as we moved in, we still had boxes everywhere, and we were already starting a, uh, a, an outdoor deck addition. And we literally blew out the side rail of the current existing deck, and we built in, I think it's, a, it's about 20 by 20 out there, and it's strictly barbecue cookers, live fire, everything. Um, going back to, to, to Craig's sort of comment there, you know, in, in, in the transition, the, the, the bigger an egg is, is, a, is a fantastic cooker. And if you're looking for one cooker to do it all, then by all means, you are getting the Swiss Army Knife or Leatherman Tools style of cooker. It bakes, it grills, it sears, it smokes. It literally, depending on how you set it up and manage your fire, you can do anything with it. Um, that being said, I sort of feel like there are some 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 better tools in the toolbox for certain items. Um, you, you know, j- j- just like you don't want to have a, a, a toolbox full of, of flathead screwdrivers. You want to have you know the pliers and the, the the Phillips and the flathead and the you know wire strippers. You know you want to have all the tools of the trade. That's where I really started diversifying a little bit into more of a live fire. Uh, I don't know. We all like to play with fire, right? We all like to. Yep. We're you know we're, we're we're just a bunch of uh, pyros, and I really enjoy that part of it. So <laughs> any sort of live fire, whether it's cooking with sticks, cooking with wood, cooking on a pit. Uh, uh, Literal, literal fire pit cooking, you know, and, and, and pellets have their place and, and, and charcoal is fantastic too. And, and so really it was more of a, I, I, I see the term pit master thrown around so much and, um, and I use pellets, man, but some of these pellet guys with their pit master, I mean, it's, come on guys. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, I didn't it's want to say it. I didn't want to go man, there. Man. It's the it's easy, easy bake oven bake route. And I know we have some of those guys in here right now that, swear by their rec techs or their traegers or smoke fires yeah. or whatever but you know yeah, it's got, it's just less primitive than than what we're talking about yeah. here that's all it, yeah, i tell you what man not to lie my pellet grills turn out a fantastic product mm-hmm. but there's nothing there's no mastery to that that's you know it, it, when you're talking about managing a pit mm-hmm. and so you know in, in my diverse uh my diversity i'm really trying to I guess ultimately earned that title of pit master. I want to be able to roll into any situation and be able to, 
handle and manage whatever sort of fire apparatus is in front of me. And uh, that that's really what I've uh, uh, come to really enjoy. And, and uh, you know, uh, um, Craig's talking about his art flame. I, I've got something similar to that. And, you know, it's, 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 it's just a fantastic showpiece. And, and, you know, we like to do um, uh, dinners, almost fondue style where, you know, I have everything prepped and ready to go and everybody takes their little sliver of the, you know, of, of the plancha and, and, and just goes to town and, and I just manage the fire and it's fantastic. But yeah, so I mean, really and truly there's, there's, there's everything out there. Uh, every, every, every fuel source, every, um, style of cooker, everything you could possibly imagine. And mm. <clears throat> what's really cool about it is you meet these people on social media or, or, or Hey, I like to grill too. And in, in, in conversation and, uh, I'll invite these people over sometime and, you think their food looks good, but you have no idea what it tastes like. And so I, 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 I host sort of like what I call a grilling party and it's, it's bring your own stuff to grill and share mm-hmm. and, you know, pick literally pick your, your, your poison, pick your app, grilling apparatus and we'll fire it up. You cook it in front of everybody. And, and it, there, there's no pressure at all. Don't, don't, don't think that it's a competition by any means, but, but it's, it's a, you know, share one of your recipes and we all just sample it and try it and, awesome. and, and, and enjoy it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It really brings <clears throat> the whole new meaning to BYOB. Yeah. There's no longer uh-huh. bring your own beer. It's bring your own barbecue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It, it's, it, you know it, it's communal cooking, right? And I, I know, I think you got the old fire and, and yeah. same thing with the Art of Flame. The, the, those that are thing truly is... communal cooking devices, but Don't get me started. then Craig's taking it to a whole other level that I'll fire up, okay, you want the big green egg, you want the PK, you want this, right. you know. You want me to just hang meat over a fire? <laughs> I'll do it <laughs> on hooks. H- hence, hence the Thunderdome, right? The Thunderdome. There you go. That's it. The Thunderdome. Yeah, so I've, I've got a, uh, I, I built a cover over top of it and, mm. and not really that you know, these cookers can't cook out, you know, in rain and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, hey, man, I'm I'm getting a little older, and I just don't like to cook in the rain anymore. Oh, and, and you worry uh, about rain. We, we, we worry about snow. If I built that yeah, Thunderdome, I'd yeah. probably have to rake it or it'd collapse when I the know, snowfall. I know. We get up yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. um, do you ask you this question? On your green eggs, do uh-huh. you ever use any temp controls? Pit Viper, Cyber Q, Cloud, Etc. I do, and um, I'll just nothing wrong I'll, with it. I do too. I'm just asking. Yeah, I'll, I'll preface by saying this, uh, and I say that in the book too. That I very, very, it's very, very, very important to learn contr- to control it on your own mm-hmm. before you start adding yeah, no a blower or, or computer, uh, whatever the, the term of it is. But I do so, um, and, and I use the Flame Boss, and okay. I'm currently using the, the their, their newest model, the 500. Okay. And I sort of equate it to when people ask, I sort of equate it to um, driving without insurance. Uh, you know, we've all had that 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 time where we've you know we've gone out, we've put a my my, my example is is I, I had a hundred and whatever it was, it was a Snake River Farms Gold, you know, uh, Wagyu brisket. Put it on the on on the uh, the, the egg. Went back inside, thought for certain my fire was good, and and and, and I was ready to go. And this is years and years ago, yeah. but um, wake up the next morning, come out, the whole thing's just stone cold. Oh. I have no idea what, I have no idea what temperature it got to. I wasn't monitoring it. I, I you know I, I just have no idea. And and uh, so it's 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 one of those things where you know I don't mind spending that sort of money on a piece of meat. So I, I'm definitely going to insure it with my you know with my blower and make sure that you know that fire is maintained all night long. Now, there's tips and tricks definitely to getting your fire to manage itself, especially in an overnight situation. Mm-hmm. But um, learn how to control your fire first, uh, your temperature first, and and then definitely add a blower onto it. And, man, look, dude, we're, we're in 2020. I'm not going to lie. If I'm sitting in my recliner over there and I can look at my phone and mm-hmm. it shows my cook temperature, my pit temperature, my cook temperature, my, my meat temperature, dude, that is just fantastic. It's a good and, day. And the coolest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I might get my barbecue card pulled for this, but I'm I'm with you. So I'm a big Flame Boss fan. I had the 200. Um, I got the. I use the 500 now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you're absolutely right, Craig. I mean, just the, the the peace of mind. But I'm I'm older than you. I think I'm older than you too. I I need my sleep. I know you love getting up and tending that fire through the night. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, I do happen love it live. I, I, I Some like, point, I'm I like really my sleep. It. Yeah, I know. I, I love. I'm, <laughs> look, at, I'm not a. I, my wife will tell you this. I am not 
a morning person yeah. whatsoever. She's amazed that I can set my alarm and get up at 1 or 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and toss on a brisket. She doesn't know how I do it. I don't know how I do it. Every time I have a brisket or a, a long cook come in a pork butt, I just – it's like – Christmas Eve the night yeah. before, and I just can't wait to get into it. Oh, yeah. Well, we, I think we've all been there, and, and you know, we started off, you know, getting up at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock and starting the fire sure. and waiting and putting the brisket on, and th- then I got a little bit lazier, and I, I I was cooking on an XL, so I would start my fire at 10 p.m., go to sleep with it smoking, and then all I would do is run downstairs, throw the brisket on, and then go mm-hmm. back up to bed mm-hmm. and go that way. And I, I really, I really almost wonder, and I don't know if there's any any factual uh, um, relevance behind this, but I'm really wondering if the hot and fast cooking method was was from guys who don't want to cook overnight. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, seriously. Look, there's a method for everything. As Mike C in in uh, in here says, there's a tool for every job, and uh, you need to have all the tools. So there's certainly an yeah. application for. You know, running the green egg on your own, making sure that you have a temp device if you want a little extra more, you know, support, or maybe you got to run out to your, you know, kid soccer game or sure. something. You just want to make sure, especially if it's, it's like up here, the winter time, you know, temps can drop. Right. So, oh, yeah. so, so having that fan can actually yeah. help if the temperature, even in the egg, it holds pretty, da- pretty darn good. Man, I had that thing dialed in today. But it ran a little hot, and today it was probably closer to, to 300. It just, as you will all of us can attest, the Green Egg loves to sit at 300. <laughs> anyone? Does anyone? Am I the only and, one? And, and once you get it there. Don't make me look dumb here, boys. Am I the there, only one? No, once you get it there, it's tough to get it back <laughs> it down. It can't get it back down. Nope. Open up that, that lid for too long, and that's it. Fire. Yeah. You know? So, so, so Craig, I got a question. So we're talking a little bit about the different cookers that you have. So I was... Uh, I was looking at your page the other day, and you did something really interesting that I had not seen before. It was pretty cool. So PK Grill, right? The the cook that you did on that, um, if I remember right, it was a uh, – you did a ribeye, right? Just a steak cook on it. Uh-huh. But you did uh, – you used that top flip-over shelf to hit it with Fogo from the bottom and top. I thought that was pretty cool. And now – I don't have a PK. I'm very well aware of them. I've seen a lot of people cook on them. Is that something that is, if you got a PK, people normally do? I just had never seen that <laughs> Interesting. before. Should yeah. you put charcoal over it? Yeah. Like, 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 like you put it in like a broiler or something? Yeah. Because yeah. it's charcoal yeah. and both. It, 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 it was a homemade salamander kind of. Let's hear about that. Yeah. Absolutely, please do not try this at home. Man. <laughs> oh, that was cool. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was, uh, I was, I was taking over uh, the Fogo charcoal page uh, that weekend, and and really wanted to do something, you know, fire and 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 just so just sort of crazy, you know, that that that, that is very 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 unique and and uh, yeah. So literally, you know, I got a, I, I took a chimney, got a got a hot, just a just a screaming hot chimney put coals all up on top of the extender rack, man, let me tell you, it was hot and I'm cooking on a deck. So it, it was a little bit scary. I did do a trial run. I did this, I did this live on Instagram side. So there's no way that I, I was going to mess it up. I did do a trial the night before just to make sure, but uh, I'm telling you, man, it's scary, especially, you know, you're, you're, and I'm using the real long, you know, the, the, what are they? 11 inch tongs. Yeah. Grabbing, the, you know, grabbing a piece of, you know, just cherry glowing, you know, charcoal that size and, and, and just moving it around is, wow, it's just scary. And, and uh, the whole thing cooked, it, 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 it turned out fantastic. The crust was, was, was just, 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 to, you know, you're up, you guys are up Northeast. I can use it. It was just wicked. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptable. And, uh, I'll allow it. <laughs> ben, we'll allow it. So yeah, we literally called it the Fogo <laughs> broiler and, and, and use, yeah, use it on the uh, uh, PK. Yeah, it, it was it was really neat. Please, uh, but, please be careful and exercise. Geez, comments. Disclaimer, I, I, disclaimer. I, I, I see I've gr- got my disclaimer. Look, I'm not responsible for anyone watching this that burns a house down. I see. Right? I, I see Greg's wheels turning. Hmm, how can I do that? I'm like, how can uh, I? I do have a double rack system in my in my egg. It, I, just it, saying, it, maybe it, I. It was just pretty cool. Yeah, I'd never yeah. seen it before in any kind, and it, it, you know, made sense. But uh, you know, you talk about fails. You talk. You were talking about. You know, losing the, the the temperature on your egg before uh-huh. on your cooker. Well, I'll tell you, it, it can always be worse. So you you know, we talked about Fogo, Sebastian's cook recently uh-huh. with the uh-huh. three Wagyu briskets. Uh-huh. I, I, I got to tell you, I cried. 
And and if yeah, nobody's yeah. seen that that video, that mm. post, uh, you know, listen, we've all had those kind of things happen. But he had, I don't know, six, seven hundred bucks worth of bris, three briskets on his uh, on wow. his rig, and. I told him, I go, dude, I, you, you, you would never, ever, ever catch me posting any sort of fail like that. <laughs> I said, man, you need to text, you know, text me. I, I saw Ernest chimed in a little bit, you know, a couple other, a couple other, you know, really, really, really solid cooks. And, and you know, you, you should have just sent us some pictures privately and asked what happened. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, man, I, I did cry. It was absolutely, uh, you know, I, I told him what I would do, especially, and this is, you know, this is a great, a, a great segue to this, but you know, you're, you're, you're testing a brand new cooker like that. Mm. Never in my life would I put $600 of, of wagon. <laughs> that's, ball, that's ballsy on a brand new <laughs> cooker that I have no idea how it's going to cook. But I told uh, him yeah. what I would have done is when I, when you open that thing up a little bit, I would have taken chicken wings and put them sort of in every single spot on the racks there that, that way, you know, you're still going to have, you know, if, 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 if it maintains temperature evenly, you're going to have great chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if one gets a little crispier up here, you know, my hot spots up here, or maybe I got one here in the middle, you know, that, that would, that would have been a more of a, um, I don't know, a, you know, <laughs> if you burn a few wings, you're, you're not out all yeah, that, yeah. all that fantastic yeah. beef, but that, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, I, I saw that and I was just blown away. That, uh, that, that hurt me to the core. Oh, uh -huh, sounds painful. Uh -huh. Hey, Johnny Mag says, Craig, my apologies for not being here due to the circumstances. No, no problem Straight here. Straight from the man himself. Heal up, heal up well. He's going to heal well. He better get yeah. his ass in here next week. That's right. <laughs> you know he will. That's right. He would have came today if we let him. Uh, th that you know what that could have been pretty interesting. It would have been. He would have been like that kid with the uh, who got his, uh, his tooth pulled in the YouTube video <laughs> in the back seat. <laughs> oh man, that would be funny. Ben would have fun with that. That's right. Ben, be my favorite show ever. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I got a question about cooking a brisket in the egg. Yeah. Do you go. F do you go fat up or fat down in your egg? So I'm, well, I'm glad you added. I'm glad you added the in the egg part of the. Uh, I uh, say to, in the egg because the section things because are all the, different. All right. So my personal opinion um, is, is is I like to use the fat cap as an extra insulator barrier. So in the egg, it would be down. If it was in a cooker okay. uh, where the heat source was a little bit different position, maybe up if if the heat was coming. But 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 you know from from over top of it. But yeah, basically I like to. I like to use it as a, as a secondary insulator. You know, the plate setter is is good, but there's still so much radiant heat coming off that thing. It's still it's still very very hot, even though, mm -hmm. you know, we're smoking at 250 degrees. There's still fire underneath of there. So yeah, I I, I go down, um, as a secondary barrier. Yep. So even though the but, heat hits the top and comes right back down on it, you you well, it's, still like it. Do, have you ever had any issues charring, like you're flat or anything like that in uh, in the egg? No. So what 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 happens in an egg is is you're you you've got to even in well, hang on, you're cooking indirect. So the heat's coming up, hitting the plate setter, and it's then it's creating convection cooking all the way around the dome. Okay. So what's happening is. Our dome temperature, what are you cooking at? 250 degrees or ish, 300 degrees? Usually, you know? usually going like 260. Yeah, it's only around there. So, yeah, yeah so, so to do 50, 260, your dome is going to be at that temperature, but you've got fire. Fire burns at a much higher temperature than what you're actually smoking at. Mm -hmm. So, the fire coming up and hit that plate setter, you're still getting radiant heat coming up off of that plate setter directly onto your, whatever protein you have there, in this case, a brisket. So, I want that fat down. So that that it, it will come up to the plate setter, radiant heat off of that fat. Fat is not going to. Uh, the, the the theory is the fat is going to render, and then it's going to self based inside of everything. I'm not 100 percent sure that I buy all of that. Mm -hmm. my, my 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 opinion is just just buy a fatty cut, and you won't have to even you know have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and for me to smoke a brisket, I'm, I'm minimum, absolute minimum prime to keep it actually in, in, in brisket. Now I'll buy like a choice brisket somewhere, but I'm probably going to grind it up and, and, and make burgers out of it or something. But you know, I, the, the, the fat content is all the fat inside of it is what is you're trying to get to yep. render out. Yep. And that's what creates the juicy moist, 
uh, uh, brisket. Now <clears throat> you say you're charring your flat. Is that? Oh no, I'm saying I, I've had I've had issues where I've charred my flat, but what I found was that if I make sure that my place setter is, you know how it's triangular shaped, you make sure that your flat is kind of protected by one of those right feet. and not not above the 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 gaps and not in the gaps right. sure. and sure. and you know i'm not so much worried about the bottom of my point there's there's a lot going on there a lot of protection right. but that flat sometimes it's thinner and stuff so i found by putting a water pan a which i don't mm -hmm. use a mm -hmm. ton unless mm -hmm. i want to um because it keeps moisture in the egg so i don't use it but to catch a lot of the juices and to protect the bottom a little more, I put that in there, and then I make sure that it's it's under one of those legs, so it doesn't yeah. that, it doesn't chop. Let, let me let me let me weigh in here real quick yeah. on that too. When you're talking about your flat being over the leg, mm. so you've got your your whole packer brisket here, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and here's your here's your flat. Start your fire instead of starting it in the middle or over here. Start your fire over here at the edge where and and, and where the point is. Okay. And that way, your direct heat, what's going to happen is that fire is going to move across this direction. Your flat won't be under the direct heat in a sense. Even though we're cooking indirect, there's still a direct heat source coming up. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is that's going to the, – the flame and the smoke is going to come up around this way. So you're actually getting true smoke versus if your fire is over here, you're getting actually heat and then smoke around this way. So – you know, I try. You know, try that sometime. Maybe okay. you'll end up with, like with a little bit of moisture. I, in it. I've always started it from, from the middle. I never usually start it from well, the. Well, that's the edges. a good tip. Now that yeah. I think about it, too, because not only that, but as that fire burns, or once it gets to the to the thinner flat side, mm -hmm. now you've already got a protective crust on it. By the time it gets over there, to yep. to kind of protect yeah. it from from drying. Or you're ready to wrap so. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, by the, by the time it gets to that point, you're ready to wrap it up, anyways. And it's going to protect it anyway. Yeah. Interesting. So. Let's talk about 2020 a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, listen, most people would say 2020 sucks so far. You've had a pretty good 2020. You've had some big... So we talked about the cookbook, and you just recently had another announcement, uh, a, a career change. Tell us a yeah. little bit about that. That's uh, some exciting stuff coming up in your life. Yeah, about, about a week and a half ago was my last day in corporate America. Thank the Lord. <laughs> uh, I, I've been in there for 20 years, and I'm 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 just glad to be out and 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 uh, doing my own thing. But yeah, we're uh, we're my wife and I we're we're opening up a uh, a retail uh, barbecue smoker grilling store. Um, we're gonna you know like 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 most stores that sell barbecue stuff, we'll have all the supplies and all the gear and all the equipment. Uh, what we do have over a lot of the other ones is the expertise and the knowledge to be able to teach someone, you know, look, man, somebody rolls in, buys a $1,200 egg and they go home and they never use it because they don't know how to use it. Yeah, you know, that, 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 That's a problem. So we're going to hear, we're here to educate people. Uh, we're going to be heavy, heavily driven on events and experiences and really get people involved and, and, and teach them and show them and how to grill. And especially now that, you know, I, I really don't think that the, I think I think the normalcy of restaurants that we all kn have known in the past is sort of well, it's it's definitely, but it's 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 never going to come back the way we all knew it mm. at one point. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's never going to come back. So I think the people are staying home more, cooking more. <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, you know we're 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 really going to show them how how they can enhance their cooking, how they can enhance the the, the product, how they can enhance. Uh, what they're actually cooking in, and really give them some great experiences. Uh, that's that's. I mean, it sounds it sounds like that's a dream come true, right? You talk about all that time, and mm. I'm I'm in corporate America too. Yeah. Um, so playing with fire barbecue emporium is the name. Yes. Playing with fire, and uh, yeah, we we sort of stumbled across that. I I said to a bunch of friends, a few, you know, a while back, I said, you know, listen, man, I just. I just like to play with fire and, and, you know, it just so happens we get hungry while we're doing it. And so <laughs> that, that, that brings in the cooking part of it. So it's definitely playing with fire and it's, it's really, the store is going to mimic sort of the Thunderdome out back in the sense that it's going to have, you know, it's, it's, we're not just going to be a bigger and egg dealer or, you know, just a, you know, a Weber kettle uh, dealer, man, we're going to have every single, fire apparatus out there known to man and just whatever you want to do whether you want to cook a pizza in a uh, an italian brick oven we got it if you want to cook you know uh, a salamander steak like uh ruth chris steakhouse we got it if, you know if you just want to use one of backyard charcoal grill we got that too so just you know we're we're we're, we're really just just man any kind of fire 
apparatus, man. We're 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 we're, we're going to be down to playing with it. So so when are you guys shooting for grand opening? I know it's probably very early on the process, but you got a uh, a date in mind. We're moving along pretty well. Um, I, I tell you what, you know, the, 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 the bureaucracy of opening a business is, especially a brick and mortar business, is just asinine the way they make you do everything. Yep. But we did take possession of our building uh, last Monday. So we're, you know, we're, we're a week and a half into it. Um, I, I did, was by there this afternoon. The framers were there. So we're moving along at a pretty decent uh, pace. Um, I'm guessing we could probably soft open mid-August. Nice. Um, we're definitely going to help uh, open a, a, with a big event August 29th. And um, Put that down. hopefully the game is, you know, the game plan is to have, you know, um, a lot of the folks, uh, the vendors that we have there cooking will be basically be, you know, d- demonstrating every single cooker that we have. And, uh, you know, we'll have we'll have just a bunch of different things that we're, we're doing and it should be a good time. So you're going to be uh, selling any any of your supplies online, but just going to be local. Uh, no, no, it's just going to be local. Okay. Um, there's, there's, there's plenty of guys who do the online game and, mm-hmm. and, you know, I really just want to, you know, I want to keep it more of a community thing. Mm-hmm. Um, now there might be a handful of, um, exclusives that we're going to be doing that, that we may open up as far as like an online, uh, e-commerce style of, of, uh, um, uh, of, uh, you know, gear, but merchandise, but, uh, yeah, yeah. As, as far as right now, it's going to be local. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, 40 minutes from downtown Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, where all the cool kids live. <laughs> <laughs> hey, course, no, right? one, no one wants to live in Atlanta, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's you know, you're stacked on top of each other. There's oh, yeah. no place to barbecue and, and, you know, so I, I'm as close to the city as I want to be for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Craig, what should everyone know about your book? What should we know? What 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 do you want to tell anyone out there about your book or anything that you have going on or coming up besides your obviously your your grand opening that you want to let people know about? Yeah, yeah. So you know, things to know about the book. Um, so far, it, my goal was to reach both the 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 beginner and novice to you know pretty much the intermediate level of, of, of grilling, um, egging, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, Kamado cooking. And, and in the book I, I did use, I use multiple cookers. So this, this, this book is, it's titled mastering the big green egg, but it really could be, you know, in, any sort of Kamado style ceramic grill will, will work. Um, but, but, you know, I just want to want to know that everybody, everybody, I want to tell everybody that it's a whole lot of fire management, um, you know, like you said, you light in the center. Uh, there's lighting techniques to uh, extend your your charcoal life um, to you know not not charring your flat like you were discussing there. There's all sort of tips and tricks in there like that. Also, the recipes they're they're fantastic recipes, but they're a great base starting point. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, I do a char grilled oyster in, in, in there, and so, and I like to do like a chipotle style with a little bit of smoky heat in 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 my oysters. But, you know, hey, listen, it, it, it's, it's giving you the basics of this is how to cook an oyster. This is how this works. If you want to change up the flavors of, of, of a compound butter, or you want to add a different <coughs> sauce, or by all means, no pun intended, the world is your oyster to ah, do it that way. I see you what know, you did so there. You, know, <laughs> <laughs> you see, you're picking up what I'm laying down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great starting point for yep. everybody. So. You know, it's 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 definitely a book that that is good for you know every every level of cook. Uh, you know, I, I tell everybody if you think you know it all from the fire management spot, just fast forward through all the words and get to the recipes. There's a lot of good There's recipes. A lot of a lot of great recipes in I, here, man. So I love the fire management part. I mean, listen, uh-huh. when I start, my first smoker was an old crappy Brinkman, um, you, you know, vertical smoker that I think I had to feed that thing every 15 minutes or something, but but it was cooking with live fire, and you kind of sure. figure things out, right? And so um, I, I think the, the people that are getting, you know, listen, we got obviously a lot of people that, that tune into pit life, right, are, are, are hardcore. But I get friends, and I'm sure you do too, all the time asking, hey, I, you know, I want to get my first smoker. What should I get? A pellet smoker? So, you know what? Again, going back there, they're easy. They're set it and forget it. But you don't learn how to master a fire you don't have to jump right into an offset or something but anything that's got a weber right anything that you can kind of figure out how to do zones and and light it over 
I think that's a great and, and very underrated yep. part of this. I think a lot of cookbooks, people just want to throw out all these cool recipes. I think that's a great part of this book. Look, it's intimidating. Fire management, sure. smoke management, it can be intimidating. I started on a very similar uh, smoker that you did, but the uh, electric version, the Red Brinkman. Yeah, yeah. The oh, water yeah. smoker. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to get, in my head, my rationale was I just wanted to get the barbecue thing down, and then I'll get myself a good smoker. But really, it comes down to having a decent piece, A, and B, knowing that piece, which I didn't really know that piece as well as I you should have. Should, tell us the truth. You just like that red color. It was all flashy, right? It was like a shiny red Ferrari. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I need it. I need it. No. Anyway. So that's funny that you said that because <laughs> – because uh, here, one other little thing that I learned about this guy is, you know, I'm always losing stuff, especially if I leave my back, my, my thunder, you know, C Max backyard barbecue. If I leave it and I go somewhere else, I, I'm missing tongs, I'm missing spatulas, I'm missing thermometers. <laughs> you know where I'm going with it. So Craig's, uh, Craig's got an interesting way of making sure that he doesn't lose stuff anymore. So what, uh, and it has to do with color, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, we all know the Thermapin, in, in my opinion, and we talked about, we touched on Flame Boss and CyberQ and all that stuff. Those are great for monitoring your temperature. But at the end of the day, for me, the ultimate read is the Thermapin. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. I'm doing, I'm doing all these events, and every time I go, um, like all my thermometers are just walking off. <laughs> and, you know, you're at a barbecue <laughs> event. You go up to a guy and say, man, you know, I think that's my black Thermapin or that's my red Thermapin, you know, whatever it is. And, I decided from there on out, every one of my thermopins that I use now are pink. And, you know, if I see another dude at a barbecue competition walking around with a pink thermopin. <laughs> you know. And I'm missing one. I know <laughs> That's exactly why he's got the pink. <laughs> Who wants to steal a pin? They'll second guess him. Like, ah. I love that. Well, it's a thermopin. So. It, it stands out a little bit, <laughs> I like right? that, man. That's awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. Craig, yeah. where can everybody find you? Man, I'm Craig. I'm Craig Tabor, T A B O R, Craig at Craig Tabor everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, um, <clears throat> Facebook. You can also check out Playing with Fire Barbecue Emporium. Uh, again, we're gonna open up August 29th. Should be a big uh, should be a big fun day of playing with fire. That sounds like a good date to get out of New England and take a trip down south, it does. doesn't it? I foresee a lot of new YouTube videos coming from your new establishment. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hot, it's literally and figuratively. It's going to be hot. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, listen, Craig, thanks for coming on, man. Really appreciate your time and taking the time. We know you're busy. And, uh, man, thanks a lot for coming. We've, we've, we've learned a lot. And we hope to have you on again someday. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me, guys. It's been fun. And, you know, whatever I can add to the show would be fantastic. Yeah, congr awesome. Congrats to all your successes. Yep. And, uh, you know, keep them rolling, man. <clears throat> yep, stay on for thanks. a few. We'll talk to you in a bit. Thanks so much. All right. All right ben, hit it. <laughs> so that's the show, everyone. What, a, what, an awesome, what an awesome guest, huh? Yeah. Johnny Mags, bro. We miss you, baby. We miss you. You missed a good one. We love you. And we can't wait until you return for next week. That's right. The GIMP. Return of the GIMP. We've got a new... Uh, return uh, yeah. of the GIMP. Yeah. <laughs> so that is it for this week, folks. Thanks for watching. Catch the audio and uh, on all the uh, podcasts where uh, podcasts can be found. iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you can think of. Uh, the video, catch us on Facebook, YouTube, on YouTube. Hit and uh, hit the uh, like and subscribe button. You can catch all of our episodes at, at your fingertips and on social media. Don't forget to check us out Pit Life Barbecue, Facebook, uh, Instagram, my Instagram, the, uh, the Barbecue Broker, yep. New England Pit Master, our awesome group, the Pit Life Group, and C Mac, where do we find you? Blackstone Boys, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and soon something else with my new mistress, maybe. Ooh, <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, until next week. Keep the smoke rolling. Keep it rolling, baby. <laughs> we probably should have went over that. Before I forgot we... <laughs> about that part. I'm so excited. <laughs>